Hey everyone, welcome to Brick Vault. My name's Jack, and today is another LEGO Weekly News update. Now, a fun little side note. This has been about the year mark since uh, I started doing LEGO Weekly News updates in the first place. It's actually a little bit more than that, so that's a fun little milestone. Anyways, I just saw that today. This is week 52 in terms of doing the episodes, even though I might have skipped a couple in the past. Anyways, a bunch of stuff did happen this week, including some massive LEGO builds and some reveals, of course, for the LEGO Batman movie and other things, as well as a uh, sort of an interesting update for lego ideas uh so anyways let's get into it and right before we get into our lead story of the day there are some amazon sales for some lego sets this week i do this every week now and actually this is a slightly better week than average because we have some really big sets uh that are on sale this week including a really awesome retired Ultimate Collector Star Wars set is actually on sale on Amazon. Check out the links in the video description below if you want to see that, and let's get back to it. Now granted, this is basically just a really big promotion from Chevrolet, but massive LEGO builds are always really, really impressive, and I'm a big fan of this new redesigned LEGO Batmobile, so I just thought this thing was awesome. They did a great job doing the uh, time-lapse build, and I encourage you guys to check out the original video. And unfortunately right now, I was not able to find out how many many Lego parts are actually being used to create this massive, uh, massive build, but you can bet it is in the tens of thousands, maybe even over a hundred thousand pieces. I have no idea, really. The groups that uh, ended up putting this whole thing together were students from Detroit's Cody Rogue community, a World in Motion, and First Lego League. It was unveiled at the North American International Auto Show, but it's really nice seeing some of the smaller stuff come together in a much, much larger form. But this would be pretty awesome to see in real life. Also on the same topic, Chevy, Chevy's Chevy been endorsing, I guess uh, Chevrolet's been endorsing the Lego Batman movie, and they also did this sort of mock Chevy commercial. I hate to admit it, but I did think it was kind of funny. I will also leave a link for that. And let's move on to, I think, the bigger story of the week. And this is, uh, we kind of reported on it last week. It's the Guardians of the Galaxy sets, except now we have the official images for them. And I think I came off a bit discouraged by uh, what the images showed last time, but they weren't really very good quality. Now that we've got a better look at them, this is the first one, the Milano versus the Abelisk, set number 76081. I do like the look of the Milano build. It looks a little bit smaller, actually, but I think I hold my same opinions as before. The Abelisk is just way too small and kind of dinky. It's okay, but compared to what it's supposed to look like in the movie, it just doesn't seem uh, like a particularly accurate depiction. The minifigs, on the other hand, all look great. They've changed up the uh, printing for the kinds of suit that they're wearing. I think it's just a different general color combo. Drax might have the same torso piece, but I'm not sure. In this set is Nebula, Gamora, Drax, Star-Lord, and Groot. That is the little mini Groot figure there. This next set is called Aisha's Revenge, and I'm definitely looking forward to this one the most. It is set number 76080, and there's a few reasons why I like it a lot. Uh, first of all, the pod build is actually a totally different kind of uh, spaceship than I thought it was similar to from before, and it looks good, but I especially like that we finally get a Yondu minifig. He looks really, really cool. And of course, there's the Aisha minifigure and this other sort of, I think it's an automated drone kind of ship, but something I didn't notice before, but now that we've got better pictures, is that the Groot minifig, the baby Groot minifig, is actually different from the other baby Groot minifig. One, he is wearing his suit here in this set, but in the Milano set, he actually isn't wearing any clothes. I think he's like a little naked baby Groot. Interesting that we get two different versions of that guy, because it is a unique part, and so they printed him differently for both sets. So he is a exclusive to both sets. Now, the last set is called Ravager Attack 76079, the smallest of the sets, and it comes with Rocket, so I know a lot of people are going to like it kind of just for that reason. But I also think Mantis is going to be a really cool minifigure and probably a funny character in the movie, and it comes with another guy called Taserface. I do reiterate the fact, though, that the ship here just, uh, just doesn't do it for me at all. It's just we've got better pictures of it now, and I like it just the same, which is not very much. There's another little land play area, and it looks like a piece of the Milano is on this uh, spot. So maybe the Milano crash lands. Sorry if that's a spoiler. I'm just I'm just looking at the set and sort of trying to glean any information from the movie that I can. But that's uh, that's that's pretty much what that's my guesstimation is. Anyways, let me know what you guys think about the new sets. Kind of wish the Milano wasn't smaller. And I'm definitely looking forward to the mid-size set Aisha's Revenge the most. Mostly because Yondu is pretty cool. And I actually like the look of that pod ship. Now this week, also more Lego Batman movie stuff. 
half was sort of discovered. This is a battle pack from the Lego Batman movie, which is kind of interesting. Couple of exclusive figs included in the battle pack, which is uh, kind of nice. We have a new Chief O'Hara, and we've got a couple of the Lego Batman movie police officers with an inclusion of the uh, bad cop helmet. Also, the build comes with a much smaller bat signal if you didn't get the other poly bag. Speaking of which, I did make a uh, little bat signal myself. It's a custom build that shoots out its own signal. Anyways, I don't know. It came out yesterday, and uh, if you want to check out that episode, I'll leave a link. All right, moving down the line, there's some more rumors. Remember, Brickheads is going to be uh, coming out mid-February for VIP members early access, and everybody's pretty confident that they are going to be based on Marvel and DC figures because they were released at Comic-Con, but there is a sort of confirmed rumor from CM4 Sci and Just Too Good that we are going to be getting a Beauty and the Beast Brickheads figure, and maybe, I don't know, this might mean that we're going to get other Disney Brickheads figures later down the line. Also, more news coming down the line, Lego Batman movie McDonald's Happy Meals toys are revealed. I don't know when they're coming out, but it is pretty much uh, what a lot of people were predicting. It's a few different kinds of cups or cup holders. I don't know, maybe some stickers, other things. No exclusive Lego pieces are coming out, but if you want any of that stuff, I'm sure the promotion's probably going to start closer to the release date of the Lego Batman movie. Also, just a reminder, February 11th is going to have a kids Valentine's Day building event, and then February 14th, actual Valentine's Day, is going to have an adult building night from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. I guess that's sort of a little date night for uh, Lego fans. You get to build a little Lego rose. It's a nice little build and just something to kind of keep in the back of your head if that's something you might want to do. And I guess we're going to move on to Lego Ideas now. If you don't know what Lego Ideas is, it's a website you submit a creation in hopes of having it become an official Lego set. Now this week, no new sets got 10,000 votes, which means no new sets are going to be put into the review stage. But Lego Ideas did have an announcement on their blog page all about something called Test Lab. It's uh, open right now for invitation. They sent out a lot of invitations for people to kind of check it out. But right now, the only thing they really have open is a new challenge for uh, creator three-in-one one sets. They want to find the fourth build within a three-in-one creator set. At the moment, I don't really know exactly what the purpose of this is. It's open for a few months, uh, sort of as a test to maybe something, a larger uh, platform that's going to be launched within LEGO Ideas. But that is happening. And I guess to finish off the rest of the episode, let's take a closer look at one of uh, the LEGO Ideas sets that I thought looked really, really nice. And you can see here that it is a set that is kind of a large gaping hole within official Lego Star Wars sets that isn't around. This is called Star Wars Arena of Geonosis, the, the, the grand finale battle at the end of episode two. Probably one of the most iconic scenes actually within the uh, first three episodes of Star Wars. And not only does this represent a pivotal moment where uh, I feel like Lego could really make a nice, big, awesome set out of all of this, but the build itself shows some nice promising and fun features. First off, I think the creatures or monsters of the arena are all built very well. There were some really creative beasts within the Star Wars universe, and I thought the action sequence for them in the movie was great, and uh, the builds for them work out nicely. Also, the creator of the set, Thunderous Blade, is still updating it based on comments and uh, what people uh, like and dislike about it. He's managed to get the arena down to just uh, under 800 bricks. And of course, this set offers itself uh, a lot of ranges for great minifigures figures to have, there'd be a bunch of really cool figs, and we would also get an opportunity to have a C-3PO battle droid. Just something to think about. I think the set could work very well as a display. It looks great from afar. It's got a lot of nice external detailing that make up the brown wall. And of course, the viewing box at the top also looks fabulous. There's also some hidden play features, which is nice. And really, this whole thing looks like a good combination between what could be a play set and also an excellent display set. Anyways, that's the set that I thought was totally worth endorsing. It is definitely a Star Wars set that needs to get made in LEGO. All right, so that is it. Uh, thanks a lot for watching, everybody. Remember to tune in same time next week for a LEGO Weekly News update. And an interesting note, I'm not going to be hosting news next week. Mike is going to be doing that. I'm going to be gone. So anyways, uh, look forward to that. And also tomorrow is our custom mock update. I might have skipped last week for Sunday's episode, but I'm going to just have a bunch more custom mocks uh, for tomorrow's episode anyways. So look forward to that for Sunday. And Mike is going to be hosting news next week. So um, anyways, thanks again for watching. And if you like our content, you can always like, subscribe, do what you want to do. And uh, we'll see you next time at Brick Vault. <laughs>